Recently, Raiden had been hearing strange whispers in his head, calling him to the dungeon. He followed the voice, which led him to a secret and haunting room. When Raiden entered the cold dungeon chamber, he could see a ghostly figure emerge. It was the Poltergast, and it had explained that it had been watching Raiden for some time. It had witnessed Raiden progress from a young rogue to be a commanding power of darkness. The Poltergast knew that their paths would eventually cross, and decided that it would be best if they cooperated. At first, Raiden was hesitant, but the Poltergast offered a valuable reward of knowledge and power that could shape Raiden's future. However, in order to obtain these rewards, Raiden had to prove his strength in combat. So Raiden agreed to the challenge and began his epic skirmish with the Lord of the Dungeon. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing on the death mode difficulty as a rogue class, and last episode we did a bunch of good stuff. We farmed up a ton of new items like our tarragon armor and our tarragon wings. We also defeated the Stormweaver, which is the Sky Sentinel, and we've got a bunch of new items like this new mount from Astrum Arius, and we also defeated the Brimstone Elemental. This episode we've got lots of good stuff to do in the dungeon. We have our third and final Sentinel, the Ceaseless Void, and we also have the Poltergast that we can fight. So let's head over to the dungeon and get these fights going. In last episode, we did a lot of preparation, but in this episode, all that preparation comes into good use and we can start off right away doing some boss fights. So here is the arena that I built. This arena is a little bit smaller than I normally do for the Poltergast, and that's because if you have too much distance, it will actually make the Poltergast more difficult. And so it's better to have kind of a smaller arena, or at least that's what I saw on the wikis. So hopefully this will be good. I decorated it with a bunch of void and abyss furniture, which I think looks pretty awesome and makes this have a much cooler feel to it. Our life is regenerated, so let's go ahead and start this fight up. And let's try this weapon because it shoots through walls. That should probably be pretty helpful because a lot of this fight is going to be the Poltergast outside of our arena. So we just need to be really cognizant of these projectiles in the arena and then we just need to keep our aim good and we'll be fine. This is a pretty tricky boss fight. He's changed a lot since the last updates. And it used to be that you could make like a super big arena, but now they've nerfed that. So you've got to be a lot more careful with how you build your arena. And you want to have a lot of solid blocks nearby. And then that really helps because it allows you to not have an enraged Poltergast. An enraged Poltergast apparently is super fast. And this arena basically gives us enough room to maneuver while also not having the Poltergast get too aggressive. And there we go, we got Adrenaline for the first time. So let's try to land a few hits here. You can see most of the time the Poltergast is actually not in the arena. Ooh. We did just get Rage though. We should probably hang on to our rage for a little bit. I actually have the Elysian Guard active, which is slowing us down a little bit when we're on the ground. And I need to remember about that because I've run on the ground for a little bit and it's like you're slowed completely. Um, and it's giving us like 20 extra defense, extra damage, and crit strike and all that sort of good stuff. And so I like using it. So right now I'm just saving up my rage until we can get either Adrenaline or get to a later point in the fight. Right now my goal is to kind of heal using our Vampiric Talisman and hopefully not have to use potions unless we're really in a bind. Oh no. Things are falling apart. Let's get down to the bottom of the arena. Well, we did get pretty far on that fight, so I think we're going to be just fine. I think it'd be probably better if our arena was a tad bit bigger, but I think we'll be able to still do this fine. I'm going to try using a different weapon, one with a little bit of homing. It won't hit the Poltergast as much because he's not going to be inside of the arena as much, but still, um, it's worth giving it a try and seeing how other things affect the battle. 
this will at least give us more self-healing because we're going to be landing more hits. And that should be quite nice. Okay, so it actually seems like the fight's been going a little bit faster. So we may just use this strategy. Here we go. We could do some good damage. Already down to 67%, and we're doing a lot better this time, I think. And we're almost there. This is probably not the right weapon for this arena and for this boss, but it's working all right. And I'm kind of nervous to change weapons at this point in the fight. We just need to keep doing what we're doing and keep dodging and we will get through this. This last 1% is taking forever. He's like staying right outside the arena. There we go. We defeated the Poltergast. Oh my gosh, that fight is so much more difficult than it's been. I think when I edit through that fight, I'm definitely going to have to skip through it because, oh my goodness, that was a long boss fight. Well, now that we're back at base, let's go ahead and see what we got in this treasure bag. We got the Ecto Heart, which permanently makes Adrenaline take five less seconds to charge. So that's really good. And we have the Affliction, which increases our max life by 10%. Gives us 7% damage reduction, 20 defense, and 12% increased in damage. And now that we've got Ruinous Souls, let's take a look at what we can craft. So we've got the Time Bolt, and it's the upgrade to the Cosmic Kanai. And then we can do the Phantasmal Ruin, and that's the upgrade to Phantom Lance, Phantoplasm, Ruinous Souls, and this Luminous Striker. We can also upgrade the Daybreak and form the Knight's Gaze. There are so many different recipes. We also have the Jaws of Oblivion. I think right now we can craft four different rogue weapons. That's really impressive. So the first one I want to do is the Time Bolt. And that's going to use half of our Ruinous Souls, but we can always buy a treasure bag if we need to. We can also craft the Phantasmal Ruin, and that should be available to us. So let's see if we can craft that. Excellent. And let's see what these two new weapons do. Oh my gosh, the Phantasmal Ruin is so cool. And if we shoot, it will still shoot homing particles. Oh my gosh, it's doing so much damage. Okay, this is a huge improvement for us. Oh yes, and the Time Bolt is also really awesome. So it doesn't look like it homes in, but when you do hit, it does a lot of extra damage. And I like that it's not a close range weapon like the Cosmic Kanai. And just to keep things moving, let's go ahead and buy another treasure bag. And that way we can get some more Ruinous Souls. Oh, and we got the Ghoulish Gouger. Excellent. That's the rogue weapon that we can get from this boss. So we'll craft one of these, and then we should be able to craft the Knight's Gaze. There it is. And this is just requiring Luminal, Ruinous Souls, Exodium Clusters, and Daybreak. This Knight's Gaze is really cool as well. It's shooting like a big explosion and it kind of fans out and does damage to the things behind it, like that penguin, of course. And then we've got the Ghoulish Gouger, which is kind of like just a huge paladin's hammer that shoots all the way across the screen. I really like the distance. 
So now let's go ahead and craft a few more of these bloodstone cores. And I think we've got enough now to do this armor set. So let's go ahead and do the chest plate. And then we can craft the rogue helmet right here and the legs, perfect. We had just enough. I'm not sure how this armor is gonna affect our defense and offense because we are getting a good buff from these wings right here. But let's go ahead and put this on and see how it does. I was actually thinking we were gonna lose defense, but we went from 201 to 224. So 23 increase in defense, and that's even with losing the 15 defense from Tarragon Wings. So now we can switch back to Seraph Tracers. And then you can see we've got 2,669 rogue damage and 101 critical strike chance. And before we had 90% critical strike and 2,591. So we definitely gained some extra damage. And the Blood Flare armor actually has some really cool set bonuses as well. Enemies below 50% life have a chance to drop hearts when struck. Being over 80% life boosts your defense by 30 and rogue's critical strike by 5%. And being below 80% life boosts your rogue damage by 10%. Rogue critical strikes have a 50% chance to heal you. So there are so many good things here. And the reason we've got so much defense is because of that bonus. When we're over 80% life, we're able to have our defense boosted by 30. So this will actually be lower defense than Tarragon armor if we drop below 80% health. But still, I think it's 100% worth the trade-off, and all of the self-heal that we get from this armor set is going to be amazing. Right now, I think we should actually go head into the Abyss because we've unlocked a bunch of new stuff there. So here we are in the Sulphurous Sea, and we've got all of our gear put on for the Abyss so we'll not get affected by breath loss and all that. And one of the things we're looking for down here are the sharks because those are gonna give us some pretty powerful new items. This spear is so cool. It really reminds me of the Soul Edge melee weapon, which was one of my favorite weapons. Okay, the big thing is going to be trying to survive a Reaper Shark because those things can do so much damage. Okay, we got an eel right here, and we're actually able to do some pretty good damage to it. All that piercing did really well. Hopefully we can survive down here. Okay, we do have a Reaper Shark. So let's go ahead and try to do some damage to it, and then run away and pull it up a little bit higher, because that way we can kind of kite it. Okay, we're doing pretty good damage though. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be able to beat him. Yes, we got the Reaper Shark. We need to get a bunch of the Reaper Tooths that it drops, but we also need to get the Valediction, which is an amazing weapon. And so that's kind of the goal right here. The hardest part about the Abyss and fighting these mobs is just how confined the Abyss is, and it's hard to get enough space to really survive. But we're doing pretty well here. We've got some good mobility. And there we go. We got the Valediction. I'm so excited. So it looks like we've got six Reaper Teeth and we've got the Valediction. So let's go ahead and put that on and let's see how this does against the enemies down here. It's unfortunately not rolled to anything that's good, but it'll still be pretty powerful, I think. I remember doing a review on this and comparing it to the rare version and I was so impressed with how powerful it was. We're gonna get killed if we don't be a little bit more careful. Those squids take a little while to kill, but we got them. Ooh, and we just got the deep sea dumbbell. That is so exciting. Whoa, the Omega Blue helmet looks like it got resprited. That looks awesome. And the Omega Blue tentacles, those are the legs. What? That really makes me want to craft that armor, even though I know I don't really need it. But that looks so cool. I'm curious to see what the Deep Sea Dumbbell can do because I heard it's really OP. Oh no, we got trapped. That's not good. Uh-oh. We gotta, we gotta get out of here. Okay, we gotta look at our mini-map. It's too dark in here. Okay, this isn't good. I think we might die. Well, we died, but we did respawn in the dungeon because I'd forgot to change our spawn point. So we might as well just do another fight. And, whoa, we took a ton of damage right before the fight started there. Got to be really careful for the start. And this weapon should do so much better. Yeah, we're doing way more damage now. This is excellent. If we can get our adrenaline going. Yes, 
We're gonna kill him so fast. I'm finally feeling like we're getting some power in post Moon Lord content as a rogue. For a while, we were feeling pretty underpowered as a rogue in post Moon Lord content. I think I might have just been picking the wrong weapons, or they are kind of a little bit weaker at the start, but now I'm feeling just as powerful as a mage or a melee class or any other class. And there we go, we got another Poltergast clear. And let's go ahead and open this treasure bag and see what we got. So it looks like we got another Ghoulish Gouger. And we got the Damon's Flame Bow, pretty powerful bow. And here is the Jaws of Oblivion, which is the upgrade to the Leviathan Teeth. And now that we got a bunch of Reaper Teeth, we were able to craft that. And I think that's one of the last items that we can craft at this stage of the game. Another thing I just noticed that we can do is craft the Blossom Pickaxe. That'll be a good one to upgrade to. That's one of the best pickaxes in the game. So I went ahead and spent a ton of gold and rerolled the Valediction to Flawless and the Deep Sea Dumbbell as well. And now we can compare all of these items side by side. So we've got 45, 50,000 damage at the most with this Phantasmal Ruin. The Valediction can do a solid 34, 35, 36,000. But this one can pierce, so it's really good. And then we have the Deep Sea Dumbbell, which kind of does between 18 and 20,000. And we've got the Knight's Gaze, which will do about 15 to 20,000. And it does a ton of extra damage behind it, but I'm not sure where that would be like a good application. Maybe if you're hitting like the head of the Devourer of God, it will splash damage all the way through the body. And then the Ghoulish Goucher is pretty similar to the Valediction, except it doesn't look like it homes, but it does similar damage. The really powerful part about the Valediction versus the Ghoulish Gouger is that it can home in so aggressively. Oh, that's a cool stealth attack that it did. It shot like Razor Blade Typhoons. And now let's take a look at the Jaws of Oblivion, which seemed to shoot out just a ton of daggers into like a kind of a shotgun effect. But it does really good damage, like 36,000. But they don't shoot through the ground. So now I think it's time to go ahead and fight the Ceaseless Void. That's the last of the Sentinels that we need to defeat in order to craft the Devourer of God summon. I have a feeling that this boss fight's gonna be pretty tricky in this small arena. The fact that we're post Poltergast should allow us to defeat the Ceaseless Void pretty easily here. Yeah, we're doing some good damage. Okay, well, we've already gotten through the first phase. Oh, we need to be careful. We're getting stunlocked. I don't even know what happened there. We got, like, totally stunlocked. Okay, let's switch to the Valediction. I think that will be really good. And let's grab some of these hearts and get out of here. Oh no. Well, after doing the boss fight, I think the problem is the arena because our gear is absolutely insane. So I don't think we're gonna have any trouble beating the boss if we have a bigger arena. So I'm gonna go ahead and break a big arena in another part of the dungeon, and then we can go over there and try the boss fight again. So here is our new arena, and it's much bigger, lots of space to roam and fight this boss. This is a big, messy arena, but I think it will do just fine for this boss fight. So let's go ahead and start this up once more. The main thing here is just not getting hit by the orbs and then not getting into those circle orb attacks because those just do so many debuffs to your mobility and that makes it just pretty tricky. Ooh, and it also kind of throws you around the map when you get in that little circle that forms. This is kind of creepy having a, a completely pitch black arena for this boss fight, but I like it. It's fun. This is such a good weapon just to throw it out there and know that it's homing in and doing tons of damage to everything. You see right there, we got a mobility debuff. Wow, we're getting thrown around this arena so much. 
But we did just get adrenaline somehow. Uh oh, we're getting hit pretty hard. This might be new to the fight, or I'm just not used to it, but man, those orbs and everything really just kind of throw you around like a rag doll, and you don't have any kind of choice at where you're going because they lock you in place and you're moving just horizontally and stuff. But that was fun. I'm quite glad that we defeated the boss, though, because I was a bit surprised when we lost after having post-poltergast equipment in that other arena. The main thing we got from that boss fight is the Dark Plasma, which allows us to craft the Sealed Singularity, and that's just the upgrade to the Dust Storm in a bottle. So we'll definitely want to craft that. And then we also need to have one of them to do the Cosmic Worm. So we may want to do just one more boss fight, and that way we can get another few Dark Plasma. So let's start the fight up again, and this time we've got torches all around the arena, because even though it looked really cool, to not have torches and to see just a totally dark arena with flickering lights, it's much easier to be able to see these circles of orbs a lot more clearly and everything. And every once in a while we should run around the arena on the ground because that really helps because we can get all of the hearts that are coming off these enemies. And we gotta kill those orbs really fast. Ooh, ran right into that one. And we should be getting pretty close here. There we go. Another clear with the Ceaseless Void. So now let's go ahead and craft the Sealed Singularity. And now we've got the Cosmic Worm, which is the summon for the next boss, the Devourer of Gods. That's going to be such a tricky boss fight. So it looks like this weapon travels a little bit of a distance and then it explodes and turns into a little black hole or some like dark energy. But the cool thing about this item is that it combines later on to form the supernova. So we definitely want to have it. Well, I think that's a great place to end this episode. We've defeated the Poltergast and the Ceaseless Void. We've got tons of really powerful new weapons and we've got a new armor set, lots of really good stuff. We are pretty much good to go to fight the Devourer of Gods. There's a couple things I'll need to farm up next episode, and then we'll be doing that fight for sure. So definitely stay tuned for the epic Death Mode Devourer of Gods next episode. I hope you all are enjoying these videos. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.